Ba-dum, ba-dum, bum, bum. Hey! Good morning, ladies and germs. Good to see all of you. I know we're a few minutes behind. I'm on daddy duty today, and my nine-month-old would not go down for his nap. He's still not down for his nap, so we just put him down quietly in the crib. It's capitalism and co-parenting today at capitalism.com. So uh, all my children, all nine of them, it seems, may uh, make an appearance. Esther, you want to say hi? I'm talking. Just come here. Yeah, I'm just talking to me. It's just me on there. Here, come here. Maybe we'll do it. Maybe you might get a two-for-one special today, a dad's edition of Capitalism and Coffee. So, and and when when you hear Philip start screaming, it'll be a three-for-one special, yeah. and we'll go get Philip and we'll answer some questions. Okay? Sound good? Deal. Yeah. Deal. Deal. Yeah. Let's get rid of this nasty blanket. Yeah, we're gonna get rid of this. <laughs> let this go, Esther. Yeah, let that go. Let that go. All right. So. We're doing Q&A today, so there's a link inside of the Facebook group if you want to come hang out with us, and I will answer your question, and then Esther will answer your question. So we'll do it. We'll do a two for one. You'll get two pieces of advice. On your lap. Okay, come here. What is the matter with you? Oh uh, well, is sleep deprivation, <laughs> uh, two children, <laughs> caffeine withdrawal. Now before we begin, we like to start with something that we call. The simultaneous sip. In order, Esther, do you have something you could drink out of? Do you have a, a, a cup or a glass or a chalice, a stein, a tankard, a thermos, a vessel, a flask of any kind? <laughs> do you have something you can drink out of? Do you have a water bottle or something? All right, will you go get it, please? Quick, quick, go get it. We're gonna do something together. Go get, go get your cup. Go get your cup. Hurry. Go, 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 go. Go, go, go. Get it, get it, get it. Get any cup. Get any with water in it. Okay. Oh, man. It's gonna miss a simultaneous sip. We can't have this. If you're watching live, please say hello in the comments. What's up, Rhino? Good to see you. Hey, Matt. Matt, uh, are you gonna join us later today for the big surprise? Hey, Tiffany. Hey, Spencer. Spencer, are you gonna join us for the big surprise later? Hey, Susan, are you gonna join us for the big surprise later? Hey, Drew. Good morning, Audrey. Good morning, Salome. Good to see you again. Good morning, Emily Wilson. Good to have you. Hey, Justin. Hey, Donald. What's up, Don? Good to see you. I'm missing some chocolate. Can you make that happen? What's up? Oh, uh, Donnie, I might be out your way here in the next few days. Uh, hey, Meg, good morning. All right, Esther, are you ready? Let's do this. All right, by the way, if you want to join us in the green room, please join us. We're going to be doing Q&A after the simultaneous sip. All right, all right, so let's go ahead and do this, Esther. I'm going to introduce you to something we call the simultaneous sip. You ready for this? Yeah. All right, so here's how it works. This is what you need in order to participate. First, you need a cup or a mug, a glass, a chalice, a stein, a tankard, a thermos, or a vessel of any kind, even a flask. And what you do is you fill it with your favorite liquid. I like decaf coffee, and you like water. And then you join a bunch of people all over the world with your cup, and we all drink together. Are you all ready for the simultaneous sip? Ready, Esther? Are you ready? Go! Ah. Oh. Oh, you got a big one. You got the capitalism chug going on. Woo! Capitalism gulp. We're still working on it. We got to come up with our own language. Uh, okay, Mohammed, you are here in the green room, but I cannot see your video. If you've got video, please go ahead and turn it on, and I will bring you on here for the Q&A. Good morning, Greg. Good morning, Ken. Good to see you. Good morning, Ben. I can hear Philip screaming behind us. Well, that's fun, isn't it? So we're just doing Q&A today, so what's on your mind? Come join me in the green room or post some in the chat box. Okay. Esther, what's on your mind today? I don't know what I'm going to do today. You don't know what you're going to do today? Probably just watch TV and The Price is Right. No, 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 no. Maybe The Price is Right. Yeah, hey, what's one of your favorite phrases from The Price is Right? The wheel. You like the wheel? Mm -hmm. What? How does the wheel work? You have to spin it and then whoever gets a dollar wins. What do they win? $1,000. Whoa! Who's the host of The Price is Right? Drew Carey? Mm hmm. Do you know where Drew Carey is from? Let's. let's LA? Uh, he, he lives in LA now, but where, does, where is he from? Where was he born? Australia? Mm, no, no, keep guessing. <laughs> but was I close? He's from. He's from Cleveland. Cleveland, Ohio, where yeah. my cousins live? That's right, yeah. 
Why don't you tell the whole internet about where all of our family lives? Why don't you just give them our address, Esther? Don't really do that. Why don't you just give I them the credit card number? I don't know what this address is. That's good. That's good. It's a very good thing. <laughs> Muhammad, I've got you in the green room. If you can pop on your video, I'd be happy to chat with you. Otherwise, Greg Johnson, will you just come out here and hang out with me? Will you just keep me sane? Will you just come in the in the green room and chat with me? I want to hear the update about what's going on with your brand anyway. Well, I'm trying to talk to Muhammad, but Muhammad is not turning on his video, so I can't see him. So I'm just going to hang out here awkwardly, hang out with you guys while I'm on daddy duty, and you all can hang out. Why does mom have to go to the dentist? I know she's going to brush her teeth there. I don't know. Why don't you tell the whole internet everything that's going on in our family? Just tell the whole family all the secrets. Just well, tell mom. Hey, Sue Anderson, do you want to come hang out with me? We're talk about the vision of capitalism.com. Want to? If so, click the link. Come join me. Okay, so Keep going. So. Tomorrow, I'm going to see my friend, a mirror, mm -hmm. and then... Day after that, we're going to Ohio for five days. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And then on the sixth day, we're leaving. Yep. And then, oh, I'm just going to do the goggly gook. You're just going to do the go goggly gook? Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know what the goggly gook is. But if we're going to earn a car to, you know, drive to Dylan and Logan's house. Yeah. Is there anything, any secret that we're going to share with the whole internet while we're just talking about our okay. schedule? Done. You're all done? Okay. Whew. Not gonna lie, that was a little bit terrifying for me. What is what is she gonna tell the internet while she is hanging out on the lap? Thanks for the kind words, Donald. <laughs> Probably so, Tiffany. Well, well, sometimes Esther and I like to do Q and A on uh, on Instagram. That's fun. All right, Muhammad. Now I can see a sort of. Um, give me a thumbs up if you're ready to come on here live. There we go. Let's do this. Good morning, Muhammad. What's up? <laughs> Good morning. So I had no idea that this would actually work. Like, I just joined and I was like sitting there and I was sitting there like share list so that you were like, Muhammad, I can see you. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, you Muhammad. I mean, it is the most common name in the world, so I could have been talking to about a billion other people. So who knows? True, true, but true, true, true. It's good to How see you. you. Doing, What's up? What can we do for you? Good, good. Um, man, you really caught me. Uh, so I was reading the book, and the thing that I was having the hardest time with was moving forward after figuring out the audience, right? Like the person I want to serve. So it falls into two people. Um, there's two people that I want to serve. One of them is basically I am like right now. You can see my laptop's right here. I work from home every day. Um, so I wanted to serve an audience of people who work from home. Right. And I have two girls, two children. And it's just like it gets wild. Right. So I had a bunch of ideas of products that I feel like I obviously can't relate at all. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> Not at all. I wish you had kids so you could know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Yeah. So like that was one audience where, you know, we're trying to figure out. But the, the whole thing was like the products, like, for example, um, for me, as you can see on this table, I sit like this and my forearms always get those lines on them. So I was thinking about a product like a desk pad that has, you know, it's like padded from there. But then when I ask other people who work from home, they're like, oh, I don't really care about that. So for me, is that me basically cutting that product out? That, that if, Probably. If, I, mean, okay. that, I mean, unless you get someone who is like, oh, my goodness, I would just I would love to buy something like that. OK. okay. Uh, I mean, then, then I probably wouldn't worry about it so much. But I do like that you've got a really clear person targeted. Which means that your job right now is to brainstorm 10 product ideas and okay. not be so romantic about finding the one. Okay. Because remember, you only need four products that sell 25 sales a day yeah. to have 100 sales a day and thus have a million dollar business. So yeah. you don't need to get caught up on one product. You need to blast your way through 10 ideas okay. and then narrow it down to three to five, then pick one knowing that you're going to have two, three, and four right behind it so you don't need to be so romantic about what that first product is because it doesn't need to be a home run it just needs to be a okay, base okay. hit you just need to get on base and okay. then the job of the second product is to move that runner over and okay. then the job of that third one is to knock in those runs and you have a million dollar business so is it necessary for each one of those product ideas to get the confirmation from the person first or like just 
like you said, like if there's a couple people that are like, I would love that and are excited about it, just move forward with it. Because that's where we just keep going like back because we think of an idea and then I present it and then it's like nobody wants it. I'm, so there's what? two forms of confirmation and this is a great question. Yeah. The first yeah. form of confirmation is other people validating the idea with okay. yeses, pre-sales, or email opt-ins. That's okay. the first form of validation. The second form of validation is sales. And that's looking at the marketplace and seeing where people are actively spending money and going out and creating similar but different products. Okay. So those are your two forms of validation. So one of the things that you could look at is just the list of products that people who work from home already buy. And that could help you come up with faster ideas and just start building that list. Remember, like you, you don't need to have one product that just blasts everything out of the water. You yeah. need to have a clear person that you're excited to serve, which is one of the things that you're starting to narrow in on. So you can look at the marketplace to continue to deepen that more and more and more and more and more, okay. and then and then pick those products from there. Okay. So the first thing you said, the, the first validation point was like seeing people's email opt-ins and uh, you said something else? Well, they're yeses. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They're yeah. email opt-ins or they're pre-sales. Okay. Those are all forms of marketplace validation. Okay. And the second one would be actual sales of the product. And the second would be sales of, of products to the same market, okay, right? okay. like other brands. Yeah. That, like, I mean, what you've got is you're coming up with a product that nobody has yet. Like it, it's something you put on the edge of the desk. Yeah. And, yeah, and so you, you have to go, you can't go look at other people's sales to validate if that's a good idea. You've got to ask and you're getting the feedback that nobody wants it. So don't do that product. Yeah. Right. So, but the other way that you could do this is just to look at existing sales in the marketplace, deepen okay. that product list from there, and then launch three. Okay. So when Got you it? say look at the sales in the marketplace, you're saying like for this specific desktop idea, or just in general? No, just dude, you got you got to get it? off your marriage to the one product. Your job uh, right now, go make a list of ten products. I already have it. Good. <laughs> okay. So you're saying. And, <laughs> And so you can validate those in the marketplace by asking people or looking at other businesses that are actively selling those products. Got it. Those are your go buttons. All right. Got it? Yes. Thank All right, so Mohammed. Much. Good to meet you. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. All right. Take care. All right, Mati, I know you are next in queue, but I can't see your video either. So I'll give you 30 seconds or so to pop on your video. In the meantime, uh, Mina wants to say hello. It's just a zoo at the capitalism headquarters today is basically what's happening. Monty, give me a thumbs up if you are ready to come on here live. I see you, my friend. Give me a physical thumbs up. Raise your thumb if you're ready to come on. There you go. There it is. Good morning, Monty. How are you? Hello. Good morning, Ryan. How are you? Good. Good to see you. What can I do for you? So I have a, br a brand of uh, minimalist gear for the for the life on the go, and I follow your book and you. And one second, my baby is here. Sorry about that. You got a similar day as me, my friend. I get it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So anyway, so my first product that I'm selling it's a minimalist wallet, carbon fiber wallet, uh, money clip, and. I have a, a key holder that I'm selling to, and right now I, I'm uh, I need to choose my next product to sell, and I follow you and I follow that that I need to find a customer and uh, and build an audience and find a, a product that a customer uh, use. So what's the so sorry? My question is what? How can I find my next product? Okay, so who is your person? So the person, it's, it's a person that lived a life on the go, uh, minimalist uh, that lived a life on the go. Okay, and what else does the person who's a minimalist who lives life on the go buy? So they purchased also a backpack, uh, journal, um, stuff like that. My, but my problem is it's because I'm selling in Amazon, let's say I'm one of uh, let's say I want to choose my next product is a backpack, it will be very hard for me to launch a backpack in Amazon because it's a very competitive product. So you are, you are focused on the product and the sales channel rather than the person. Okay. So the minimalist who lives life on the go isn't a very specific person. 
So okay. who is a minimalist who lives life on the go? So it's it's a person like me, you know. That's what that's what I'm look I'm looking for. Okay. And, like and who are you? Like how how you don't you have never told somebody, "Hi, I'm Mati. I'm a minimalist who lives life on the go." Right. So how do you identify yourself? Mm, just just a regular person, like you know. Let me ask it yeah. differently. That first product was like a key holder or something? That was a, a carbon fiber wallet. Minimalist wallet. Okay, and, and so what does that do for you in the context of your life? That's helped me, you know, the, with the wallet, it's, it's fine. The bulky wallet, you know, it's, it's helped me to... Uh, but it has nothing to do with being a minimalist who lives life on the go. Okay. Okay. Am I wrong? No, no. So your so your person isn't really a minimalist to lives life on the go. What so a better question would be if that is going to be your market, what else does a minimalist buy? And if you don't know the answer, you need to go ask them. Great place to do that is on Reddit. Ask your existing customers. Right. Ask other influencers who are active in that space. There's a bunch of organizing and minimalist influencers who are making product recommendations all the time. Go look at what they're recommending and what they're talking about. That's assuming that this is really the market that you want to serve. I'm not convinced it is. The, I think you just made up a bullshit person to, to wrap around this wallet, which a lot of people do. So your job is to either pick the person that you want to serve and you can decide later if the wallet fits into that or not. And it might not. And that would be fine. And it's just a little cash flow thing that you do to fund the operations of your brand. Totally yeah. cool. Totally fine. Yeah. Or you need to find out who the wallet is really helping and serving and go develop more products for that person. And that's how you'll crack this nut and go from one product to four products. So, okay. So find who the wallet is surfing, serving. Like and who then... are the raving fans of the wallet? Okay. Why do they use it? How do they use it? And then you go develop four more products for that person. But I predict that the wallet was just a product idea that you launched and you didn't really have a person in mind and you'll be happier and move faster if you just pick the person that you want to serve and start now. Okay. okay. You're confused by that answer. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me why. Because that, that's my, my biggest struggle to find a person and to build a, to, to burn around the person. This is my biggest struggle all the time to find who is this person. Well, the reason you struggle with this is because you didn't identify it when you launched the first product. So you just right. launched the product and you have this amalogous audience that doesn't have a clear person. And so the thing now is not to figure out, okay, who's the wallet for? Who's the wallet for? You're just going to drive yourself crazy. It's like asking who buys spatulas? Who buys spatulas? Yeah. Well, everybody who has a kitchen. Right? Right. So, 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 so your job is to just pick the person that you want to serve. And so you might say that that is the entrepreneur dad who works from home. We're just going to go with okay. that because that's, that's, I think, you. So if that's yeah. the case, what is the entrepreneur dad who works from home like and buy? Well, they have all buy wallets. And, and they all buy wallets that look, look cool, wallet. that have a little bit of status to them, that don't bulk up your pocket. That's one thing. Okay, what else would that person buy? The person might buy like um, a gun rack or a gun holder. Or that person might buy a really sleek laptop cover, a really sleek laptop case. Yeah, yeah. Or they might buy a really nice camera bag. Or they might buy really well done luggage because they travel a lot. Or they might buy yeah. car cleaning stuff, right? Like I'm not e yeah. like this isn't even my market. I just made up five products. Yeah. And the reason yeah. you can do that is because I got real specific about who that person was, and now we can rattle off what that person might buy, make the list of ten, and narrow it down. Yeah. Now it might yeah. be different. You might end up saying that your person is a photographer. I don't know why, but like yeah. you have a passion for photography that nobody knows about. You want to develop. That market. Does that person buy wallets? Well, maybe it's a wallet that has a special thing for your favorite photos. I don't know. But your job is to pick the person first, then decide if the wallet fits for that. If it doesn't, 
then the wallet is just your cash flow thing that you yeah, use to yeah. fund the other business. I think those are your next steps. Yes. yes. So I consider the first entrepreneur of the tool at home. This is a, a specific enough. I would go. I would go more specific about you. Yeah. About you're, you're, that's much closer, and you can start there. Okay, what does the entrepreneur who works from home buy? And you look around your house, and you're like, I buy this and this and this and this. Do I buy a wallet? Yes or no? And then you go from there. All right. Perfect. Make sense? Thank you. Yes. All right, Monty. Good to see you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Alex, you're on deck. Give me a thumbs up if you is ready. Let's do this. I got two thumbs up. Good morning, Alex. How are you? Good morning, Ryan. I'm good. Can you, you hear me okay? Your audio is brilliant. Great to yeah, see you. The, the, <laughs> the What's up? Me what can good. we do for makes you? Makes me look good, I think. <laughs> uh, actually, I don't, I don't have a question. I just um, wanted to mostly say thanks. Um, I'm working on, uh, it's, it, well, I, I didn't have a physical product, so I didn't think we really meshed on that level. Um, so uh, I've been working on this thing for like 10 years. It's been on again, off again. Life kind of pulled the, right, the rug out from under my feet at one point. And uh, it's just the past six months or so that I'm, I'm back on it. And oh, I really have to get it done. So I had a long talk with Bram and Greg a couple weeks ago. It was awesome. And, uh, and just listening to you every week like this, this, this couple times a week like this, because I'm all by myself in my basement. This is, this is no fun. And, uh, so, so having, you know, being able to connect with all these people and being able to listen to you and you seem to be talking directly to me because every, every week you say, okay, we're talking about this this week. And I'm like, that's exactly where I am. Um, so uh, that's so, great, so, Alex. It is. And right now I am cool. talking directly to you. So what a coincidence. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? Alex, Who knew? Uh, um, tell us about where you are in the, in the journey. Well, uh, what I have is a website. I don't know how much you want me to say about it here. It's, uh, it's, um, uh, I publish other people's romantic short stories is what I do. And, uh, it's, it's, it's very cool. It's very fun. Um, and, and it's something that I have huge vision for. I mean, it, it, and it's an idea that has morphed through, um, at first I thought it was going to be a magazine back in the 80s. Um, and then the internet thing happened, you know, and then kids happened. And then the internet thing got better and I got better at it. Um, so I, I launched it pretty much uh, in uh, 2011. And I had a full year of Wow. I mean, I was, it was just a learning curve, just a, it shot straight up. It was a vertical line and uh, it, it was, it was really exciting. And then a year later, my husband passed away and romance went out the window. I don't want to hear anybody else's happy stories. And uh, so I sat on it for a couple of years um, and I tried a couple of times and realized I wasn't ready. Wrote a book last year, flushed out all of the, the, you know, the emotional garbage. And uh, I thought, you know what? I, I, and I, I started listening to you again. I thought, well, you know, I have a thousand ideas. Which one do I want to go first? That's, that's my thing is pick, just pick one. And uh, so I thought, why not go back to one that's already kind of halfway there? <laughs> so I, I, uh, I went back to it. I started looking it up. The site had been crashed. It had been hacked beyond belief. And so I paid someone to clean it all up for me and it come back and and it's the the traffic is there. The traffic has been steadily growing. I, I probably get about three four thousand visitors a month, um, which surprises me. I want the subscribers, not just the visitors. But that yeah. you know, it's, you know still it's still getting, getting uh, attention, uh, attention and, and easy. Can, to I, work can with. I throw a couple so, ideas so. your way, Alex? Yes. yes. So I'm just, I'm loving hearing your story right now, right? Cool. And there's there's something really there's something really compelling about hearing about your journey through this lens of entrepreneurship because it, it, it's, there's, there's something you're sitting on like something really magical here. And I, there's, if you're comfortable with it or if it's exciting to you, I think that you would do really well sharing your own personal journey and your own personal transformation in the context of all of these. For example, what's going on in my head is a podcast where you are interviewing people about their love stories where, but it's real love stories, but you are delivering it from the context of someone who is healing from the pain of losing their closest person, right? You want to believe in love again. You want to believe that you can find it again. You want to believe that it's real and it's possible. 
Like you, you want to believe that there's hope a second time. Like these are all things that you as a person who's on a journey are hoping for. And you can do that through the lens of publishing other people's real stories. And you can monetize it by the publishing of other people's fictional stories on the site. If that sounds fun for you, there's a wide open market for that. I mean, a wide open market for that. It does. And, and remarkably, it's, it's, it's funny because all the ideas that I've had over the years, and I've kind of touched on this, touched on this, it, I know they all tie together in the, on the other side they be, because they all come from me. So I know they're all, and I am, I have this wonky story with my kids. When we moved into the house that we're in now, we had flipped the last three houses. And so the kids have lived in a permanent construction zone. I like to, I like to build. And, and they made me promise mom one year, one year, no hammers, no drills, no nothing. And I'm like, Oh, so I sat for a year and I drew out the house plans of what I wanted to turn the house into. And, um, at some point, a few months into that, uh, the shower head fell off and, and smashed into the tub. And so I had to go buy a new shower head. So there you are at Home Depot and you're looking at 2000 shower heads and you're like, oh, what's my price range? Holy crap. I don't know what to buy. And all of a sudden it hit me standing there looking at all these shower heads. I'm not going to replace the shower head that I have. I'm going to buy the shower head for the bathroom that I've already designed. So the, so the whole concept with the kids and, you know, mom, what should I do? And I just look at them. They're like, oh, yeah, buy the shower head for the bathroom you want, not the bathroom you have. I love it. Right? I love that right? analogy. So every decision that you make, as soon as you have a goal, and I, I have a couple of really big ones that are in line with each other. But as soon as you have a goal, every single decision that you make moving forward takes you in that direction. You're not going to turn around and go, oh, like even if it's a squirrel, you're not, you're not going to go after the squirrel because – is that going to, you know, sometimes it's a little bit of a detour, but every decision that you make is easy because it's all going in that direction. It's all going towards the direction right? of the thing that right? you designed in your exactly. head. Exactly. Exactly. So okay. I know all of these so things all fit together in the end. And um, one of the things that uh, that I do want to do, and, and it's funny because what you just said about doing po podcasts like that. One of the things that I want to do is brand my own name and my own story along with the novel, um, because I think it's such an important message. Is is that you know, and and I want to I want to go after women who hit midlife and haven't got a clue. All of a sudden, something happens and they haven't got a clue. The kids moved out, or the husband left, or or they got outsourced and and all of a sudden at 50 they don't have a job and and their qualifications don't match anymore or somebody I died. Love, I love this market for you, Alex. Right? Like, I would right? I would highly I would highly suggest that you follow this impulse. I think so. I think so. Yeah, so that yes. that the podcast ties the two together perfectly cuz I was thinking, you know, there's the whole, you know, branding to my to my women who want to change the world in their second act. And then there's the whole romantic shorts that I really really just want to I I really need to put that out there for some reason it just keeps pulling me i have to i have to get that done, done. and but you I, just I, tied I, the two I, together i think that's brilliant i yes. would go recruit five couples go get their story edit it down those are your first five episodes your sixth yeah, episode yeah. you share your story and then you're <gasps> off to the races i think that's, that's awesome. awesome cool keep that's us posted great. Alex. Thanks. thanks all right Appreciate great it. to see you see you later, later. take care bye, bye. Sue, are you good to come on and talk a little bit about visioncapitalism.com? Uh, um, all right, cool. I'm bringing you on. Now, now, good morning, Sue. Good to see you. Good to see you. There you go. For those of you who don't know, Sue is my right hand on content. Um, now, Sue, I've got a screaming nine-year-old about uh, 15 feet from me. Is it okay if she, he joins us for this, this part of it? All right, you're going to have to hold down the fort for about 20 seconds. No, but be nice to Sue. Okay, be nice. Maybe we should sing that little baby a song. I don't know. Might make it work. <laughs> Let's see. We're going to all see Philip. Oh, he's coming. I don't hear him screaming now. Let's see. Oh, here he comes. He belongs in the insane asylum. We've all been there, right? <laughs> Woo! This guy right here belongs in the insane asylum today. Aww. So this is Philip Daniel. I think this is his first introduction on the internet. I 
So this is Philip. Hi, buddy. Hi. Yeah, there he is. He sees himself. So, Sue, we've made a lot of headway about the the shower heads that we want to build in the next phase of our vision. Oh, yeah. And kind of when I shared with you where I wanted to go, uh, you you did a little happy dance. So t <laughs> tell me a little bit about how you received it and, and where we're going. So it's so cool. I'm so excited with this. Uh, it's You know how, like, everything on the Internet is kind of depressing almost everything it's all bad news and this per throwing rocks at things we don't like all that kind of stuff and you know that's not really what we're about at capitalism.com at all like our people are some of the most positive giving it's an amazing community there is no place more positive and and supportive than this and really capitalism is the thing that saves us you know as a as a as a world, as a community, we solve problems that we didn't cause. We serve people. This is how capitalists get rich, entrepreneurs. And so, you know, why not highlight that kind of stuff? There are entrepreneurs who are solving almost every problem you can conceive of. Many of them are in the 1%, but there's a whole bunch more that are still out there just in the world. And we're going to start highlighting a lot of their stories and and just showing like, this is amazing. Look at what people are doing to one piece that I'm working on is how people are cleaning up the ocean. There's huge waves and seas and pools of plastic just floating around in some parts of the world. And there are entrepreneurs who have found a way to fix that. So that type of thing is like, how can you not feel great about the world? And, and, and most people and most media organizations are just focused on the problem. And the problem's getting worse and worse. But what we aim to do is just highlight over and over again how capitalists and entrepreneurs are focused on the solutions yeah. and are aware of the problem and are already on the solution. We spend so much energy focused on the problems that are getting worse and worse and worse. And, and so that's why people think the world is getting worse, that there's so much polariz polarization and negativity. And there's so little focus on where we are improving and growing and prospering. And so we're going to bring that to the world rather than focusing on the problem. And what I love, what I love too is that, that you know, when, when we're in our brains, brains or wrap, whatever it is that we focus on really kind of expands, at least in our brain. And it's like if you're depressed about, you know, anything, any sort of topic that's out there. You know, you can really focus on that, and it's a huge distraction from you bringing forth into the world your gifts, your talents, your abilities, the things that your message, the ways that you can serve the world. And it's like it just sidetracks us, and we all lose out on that. So instead, I, like, let's be so focused on the solutions and the great things that people are doing. I think it's going to free up entrepreneurs' brain space and inspire, inspire them. them. You know, Philip agrees. Yeah. yeah. Philip, in, instead of debating global warming, we're just going to show all the solutions that are tackling that problem. Exactly. Instead of debating Black Lives Matter, we're just going to show all the black entrepreneurs who have overcome adversity to build great things. Instead of debating politics, we're going to show emerging technologies and emerging ideas that are making their way through Washington. Instead of debating organizations, we're just going to highlight the ones that we want to support and want to be like. Instead of debating the problem, we're just going to show people who are creating the solution. Yeah. So that's where we're going next. And so if you so guys if you have, have stories, stories, like if, like you're, if you're like, like oh, my oh my gosh, gosh I read this read... thing, or I heard about this guy, or this woman who's doing this thing, let us know. We, you know, I'm I'm scouting. That is part of my daily routine now. Is scouting for amazing good news to share. Beautiful. Well, I can't wait to go down this road with you, Sue. Yeah. All right. Good to see. You. I'll talk to you in thirty minutes. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. See ya. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for hanging out with me and Esther and Philip as part of your Tuesday. Um, hey, this Sunday was a really good session inside the 1%, so I just want to give a public thanks to all of you who are active on the Q&A and doing assignments and posting in the Facebook group, Facebook group about it. It's been really cool to see your brain gasms as a result of last week's session. So if you missed that, go watch it because there was a lot of uh, deep thinking and deep work that happened. And it was really fun to, to see all the feedback that came from it. So keep posting in the Facebook group about that, and I will see you guys later. Have a great day. Talk to you later.